What's up everyone, it's your boy Norn, Rad 89 here, bringing you another video, and for today's Rad Movie Review, we are going to be discussing Insidious Chapter 2. I already did my Rad Movie Review for the first Insidious film, I have that link in the description below, just in case you want to go back and check out my thoughts on the first film. Today we're going to discuss the first sequel that came out in 2013, and this one I can tell you right away is up my alley right more is like in my realm of stuff that I enjoy in terms of the insidious franchise this is the film that kind of gives me everything I want in it so today you're going to hear my positives the negatives the rating and then I'm going to send you all home so let's do this roll it So Insidious Chapter 2 is the sequel to Insidious, and this one picks up right, pretty much right off where we left off, but we actually have a flashback sequence in this film as well that kind of shows you the introduction to Elise and how she met Lorraine's character and how she came to help Josh first and get rid of the entity that was following him and everything. And I love the fact that younger Lorraine is played by Jocelyn Donahue from House of the Devil. That one just, just it's such a gem to see her in this film and it makes the flashback sequences even more. Like this film for me just is the one that gives me all the stuff I want in terms of an insidious film and just the fact that we have like such a like kind of fantastic little you know side character like she's not really a side character but she's only in flashbacks but plays the younger version of Josh's mom Lorraine and man yeah this one I think does a good job building that background for Josh and having us care for him more because we're getting more depth to his character and of course they brought Lynn Shea back and had to bring Elise's character back because I think that was Probably the biggest, one of the hugest mistakes in that first film was, you know, getting rid of her at the end of that third act. And then from then on, we pick off right where we left off in terms of, you know, Elise is dead, Patrick Wilson is there, you know, and we know he, us as an audience member, if you've seen the first one, we know already that he's possessed by the entity and, you know, his, his wife doesn't know, but like you said, Elise is dead and they don't know what the hell happened. They're going upstairs, everybody's freaking out, you know, and then he pops up and stuff and there's one last picture on that camera and like that picture says a lot so i think it's really cool that this film it's it just doesn't pull any punches and it just gets going right away and i like that and i know this film probably one major my side negative would be that you would have to watch the first one to get context where you're at this is definitely one of those sequels that you can't just i think dive into i think you really have to watch the first one and that will enhance this second one so for me but I like it because it just doesn't pull any punches and it just gets going right away. There's no pussyfooting around and we get to the meat of the story right to it. And then we also have another story, a side one, that goes along as well. So we have Steve Coulter in here who plays Carl, who is a character that knows Elise and he's someone who's helped her on previous jobs and everything. And Steve Coulter's character, I really like, you know, his gimmick, his style, his portrayal of the character is fantastic, Carl. And I like how he speaks to the spirits and, you know, throws the little die down that have all the letters on them and he speaks to them and the answers are like in the die and you have to kind of search them and stuff. So I like the atmosphere and the creative characters that they pull into this franchise. You know, there's really a a lot of good actors and charismatic actors that bring to life these cool characters that are really well written by Lee Whannell. And that's kind of our side storyline that has to do with him. So we have two plots basically going on in this film. We have Patrick Wilson's plot in terms of we know he's the entity and then his body starts to rot and he slowly starts to kind of go more insane as the entity is in our real world and finds out that it's going to have to jump to another body to end up staying in our real world and all that kind of stuff. So you have that side plot going Going on with kind of that maniacal twisted version of Patrick Wilson and then you have the other one where you know Carl's character is trying to find the origins of pa uh, Patrick Crane I believe is the character's name the ghost character and they're doing more history and more background searching you know and we have the side characters that help Lynn Shea you know Elise they're teaming up with Carl to dig deeper into this you know mystery so those are the two main plots and everything and that's for me like I said this one's just more meaty gets right down to business and we have a lot of good charismatic characters and I think the creepy value is still there I wouldn't say this film's scary but it does have a creepy atmosphere and one thing that's a huge positive for me compared to that first film is that Patrick Wilson's character gets a lot more to chew on I really do enjoy Josh's character better and plus we have two versions of him because we have Josh that's stuck in the further who is just the normal version of Josh and then we have Josh 
Josh that's in the real world, which is the possessed version. So I think Patrick Wilson is much better in this sequel because in that first film I just felt like he was so bland he was just he was just kind of there and just reacting to everybody else and I feel like in this film he's kind of commanding a lot of the scenes that he's in and that's more of something I see like the gravitas that Patrick Wilson brings to a character so I'm much happier with his version of you know Josh in this film. So let's get into the mixed and negatives because for mixed and negatives for me this one like I said is much more an improvement for me in terms of that first Insidious film so I definitely enjoy this one and this is the one that I recall the most too when I think about the franchise all the moments all the you know imagery and stuff are stuff that I recall from this film and Insidious chapter 2 in terms of like I said negatives one major one would I be like you have to digest the first film to watch this one I really don't think you're gonna get the payoff or get certain moments without watching that first film so you definitely have to watch the first one that's a negative and also I do enjoy the fact that we have a lot going on in this film and it's much more entertaining and involving but I do feel like the two side plots at some points are clashing you know what I mean where we we're, we're into this one and we're, you know, involved in the Patrick Wilson storyline and then we hop over to these characters and then you're kind of back and forth and then they eventually do cross paths with a very good tense scene like where, you know, Josh's character and Carl's character come across each other, you know what I mean? And then like he throws the die down and asks, what is Patrick Crane holding behind his back? Like, So that's a really fantastic tension scene. I love how we built up to that, but I do feel like sometimes the side plot, the two plots together, you know, do clash a little bit in terms of pacing throughout the film. And the last negative is really just a personal taste one for me is that I still do wish that this was more of a hardcore film, more gory, more gruesome, but that's, I know that's not what Insidious goes for you know insidious films are more about atmosphere really good charismatic characters and that those jump scares and stuff like that and for me i'm still i'm a gore hound so i really do want some gruesome moments like i would really appreciate these films being more just more rated r and just having just maybe a moment of that really gruesome scene where you see someone ripped open or you see some horrific scenery but you know they, they don't really do that they're very much kind of tamed more introductory level type horror film so i really can't hold that's why it's kind of a minor negative i can't hold it against this film too much because that's what the insidious franchise is is in itself is more of a pg-13 atmospheric type horror franchise and in terms of the rating in my book insidious chapter 2 is going to get an 8 out of 10 that's a very solid rating a lot better than you know the first film for me like so this is the one that i want to return to like if i had all the insidious films like i owned them all physically insidious chapter 2 is definitely the one that i would be grabbing to watch the most and like i said when i recall the franchise in my head before i even started binging these films this was the one that I remember the most because it has the most iconic scenes, you know, for me and has the best acting that I think is in this film. And I really do enjoy the story in this one. So, yeah, Insidious Chapter 2 lands really good, you know, with a solid rating at that 8 out of 10. But these are just my thoughts, my opinions. That means I would love to hear from down below from all of you. Let me know your thoughts on this film so we can discuss and be sure to like, subscribe, and have that notification bell poked so you're notified anytime I post a video because all the support, I greatly appreciate it. You know, the likes, the comments, it definitely helps out the channel and the algorithm, you know, promoting the videos and stuff. But most importantly, I want y'all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.